The debate over genetically modified foods is set to erupt again with the imminent arrival on Australian shores of a corn product made with an unprecedented amount of GM traits. Australia's food regulator does not need to specifically approve this new plant and critics of GM are calling for an overhaul and strengthening of assessing or assessment procedures. Mary Gearan reports. Passion about GM foods is still strong, a decade after they entered the world's food supply. Witness recent protests about traces of GM found in infant soy formula. And about Australia's labelling regime. As protesters in North America resist the first genetically modified animal bred to be eaten. What if you could make game-changing increases in your corn yield? Now there's a product coming Australia's way that could test consumers' tolerance for GM to an unprecedented degree. Genuity Smart Stacks from Monsanto. Smart Stacks is a corn variety with eight genetically engineered traits, the largest number to date. It's expected to land in Australia early next year in a range of products after it's refined into ingredients such as corn syrup and corn starch that under current laws don't need to be labelled as GM. This product was rubber stamped by our food regulator with no approval process. So if you look at the regular GM trade approval process, it's incredibly lax compared to something like the pharmaceutical testing regime. The majority of regulatory agencies around the world uh, at the food, on the food side, uh, don't require to uh, separately assess stacked um, uh, varieties. The Monsanto and Dow AgroSciences companies boast SmartStacks is game-changing technology. Six of the artificially added genes give the plant protection from a variety of insects. The other two give it resistance to herbicides, including Monsanto's own Roundup. All these technologies work together to... What has sparked most protest here is the fact that Australia's food regulator, Food Standards Australia New Zealand, or Fazans, says there's no need for SmartStacks to undergo assessment for approval because all of its individual GM lines have previously been approved and were conventionally bred together. The CEO of Fazans, Steve McCutcheon, says pre-approval wasn't necessary even as a precaution. I guess if you're going to be doing any testing of a food product, for example, or derived from stacked uh, gene technology, um, then essentially what you'd be testing is the same material that you would be testing for, a, for the parental lines. Again, the safety assessments and the science as it currently stands suggest there are no safety issues. Professor Peter Langridge is CEO of the Australian Centre for Plant Functional Genomics, which uses genetic engineering to develop new cereal varieties. He supports GM as safe technology that's also good for the environment and he supports Australia's regulatory stance on smart stacks. We know a lot about the nature of both the genes and their product and there's no scientific reason to suppose there should be any problem in mixing them together. So I think this is actually a, a fully safe comb uh, combination of genes. Dr Judy Carman disagrees. She's a biochemist and epidemiologist conducting independent feeding studies on GM crops. Dr Carman says the gene stacking of this product carries the same risks as polypharmacy when patients mix too many medications and they combine with ill effect. On this basis we have clear scientific evidence that if you start putting different GM genes into the one GM crop that you are likely to have a similar polypharmacy type of effect on people and to assume that that's not going to occur is I think quite uh, remiss. Steve McCutcheon says the European Food Safety Authority did consider the interaction of the genes when it approved smart stacks and that that is enough for it to be considered safe for Australia. We don't have the resources to be able to do the major research projects and generate the data that are done in, say, North America or Europe. So in that respect, uh, we are a bit of a follow. But having said that, we, we do, um, again, use very rigorous and robust processes in Australia to, to use that work. Professor Langridge says even though GM science and regulation is safe, there's still a problem with how the technology is perceived. I think we do have a, a bit of a crisis of community con confidence in, in the way in which technology is developed and being used. If that's true, isn't Fazan's partly to br blame because you are supposed to be producing well-informed consumers about GM? Sure. Look, I, I think um, consumer confidence is very important. Um, in the surveys that we've done over the years, we've tended to find that GM food, and particularly the safety of the food, is, is, 
is diminishing in terms of importance to consumers. I think basically at the moment the, the views have stayed the same for about 10 years now and I think the GM com companies on agriculture still have a fair bit of work to do. Professor Michael Gilding examines public attitudes to biotechnology. His research doesn't tally with a recent report commissioned by the government that says 63% of people accept the general notion of modifying plants for food. People overall are uncomfortable with GM agriculture. A bit under 50% are uncomfortable, a bit over 30% are comfortable and about 20% are in the middle. The report to government said half of those opposed to GM would be converted if there were evidence of no long-term harm being caused. But Dr Carmen says regulators can't evaluate this because they rely on data from GM companies themselves and the companies don't test for long-term effects. You know, they don't measure cardiovascular health, they don't feed it to animals for long enough to develop cancers, they don't do reproductive studies. The allergy studies that are done are not done on animals. Why should we be relying on the company's data? Because the onus is on them to prove that their product is safe. And so they've got to spend the money, and it's a lot of money, to be able to generate that data, do all the appropriate tests, uh, to provide us with all the information we would need to make a separate assessment. Fazan says the company's data needs to meet internationally recognised standards. Neither Monsanto nor Dow would comment for this story on camera, but a spokeswoman for Monsanto said the company's products meet regulatory authorities' requirements. Paradoxically, Smartstacks didn't initially live up to its promise for Monsanto's own bottom line. Preliminary reports that the relatively expensive seed produced low yields saw the company take a sharp hit on the share market. So it looks like they're a bit of a dud, frankly. They're failing both farmers and Australian consumers who just don't really know what they're eating or what impact that could have on their family. We need community support for what we're doing. Uh, and uh, in many areas of science, and I think GM is a classic example, we don't have strong community support. And that is a, is a significant hindrance to us uh, going forward. For more than uh, that report was uh, from Mary Geeran.